Hey everybody, welcome to an abbreviated episode of Blowout and Damper 3. I'm Eric, my co-host Jeff is out at the moment. Turns out that he's old and frail, and he's been sick with plague, consumption, something, I don't know. But uh, he's been on his back for a little while, so while he's recovering, I thought I would take advantage of the situation. Today's episode is supposed to be us arguing over what the best morning cartoons were were during the 1970s and 80s. So what we're going to do today is we're going to plant the seeds of an argument. I've picked five of what I think are some of the best cartoons that we grew up watching during the 1980s, and uh, we're going to review some of the intros to them and um, set it up for a good argument later on down the road. So uh, take a look at what we've got here, and if you've got some that you think deserve to be in the top lists, let me know in the comments, uh, and we will discuss these and put out some polls and uh, see if we can come to some kind of uh, official uh, ruling on what the best cartoons were during the 1980s. Okay, let's get into it. Number five, Battle of the Planets. Battle of the Planets. G-Force, five incredible young people with superpowers. This followed the adventures of these five kids who I think were, they called them orphans. Actually, four of them were orphans, and then you had Kiop, who was some kind of clone or something. He was grown in a lab. Um, but uh, yeah, the, uh, this kind of proto-anime show uh, was really exciting to watch. It had some pretty cool fight scenes, too. Number four, Dungeons and Dragons. Where are we? Look out! Ranger, barbarian, magician, thief, cavalier, and acrobat. This is perfect for those of us who were actually playing the game at the time. And though they took a lot of liberties with the classes and things like that, um, there was no cavalier class at the time. There was no acrobat. And... Um, but still, it was a lot of fun. And um, Tiamat was just cool to see. Number three, G.I. Joe. Yo, Joe! He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe, American hero. G.I. Joe is there. It's G.I. Joe against Cobra the enemy, fighting to save the day. He never gives up. He's always there, fighting for freedom over land and air. G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe, I mean, uh, what can you say? It was a, it was a toy juggernaut um, that produced some of the coolest action figures, and um, the, the, the music was kind of cool. So, yeah, definitely one of the top cartoons to come out. And, of course, it spawned um, some fairly successful movies later down the road. Number two, Transformers. <laughs> Oh man, this thing spawned a massive franchise uh, down the road. Um, definitely a, uh, a gigantic commercial for toys, just like most of these um, uh, cartoons were, but a lot of fun. And let's just say it, Soundwave was the best of all of them. And finally, number one, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. And the masters of the universe, by the power of Grayskull. Now, I added that, to be honest with you, this one, I loved watching He-Man. It was pretty cool, um, but uh, it really disturbed me to find out, um, if you saw our last episode, that uh, the Masters of the Universe action figures actually outsold Return of the Jedi back in 1983. And as a huge Star Wars fan, that is shocking and a little bit upsetting. But you know what? He-Man was a lot of fun. It's definitely a good cartoon. And so, um, so yeah, maybe it, was, uh, maybe it earned it. Okay, guys, that's really all I've got right now. Uh, again, flying solo, so um, uh, I'm gonna gonna pause here so that Jeff has a chance to recover and fume over my choices. We'll meet up with you again right after Christmas. Okay, everyone, um, please like and subscribe, 
and uh, let us know your thoughts on what the best cartoon was growing up in the 1970s, 1980s, or heck, anytime. Uh, have a great day. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy Holidays. <laughs>